Hello everybody, this is Sonia Scalia from Virtuality and today I am with the Professor John Firewalk and we are at the Ball State University and he's going to show us a little bit around what is the university has been doing, the projects have been working on and okay, John Firewalk, welcome to, to this interview. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Okay, I see a, lo a look around here and this is a very interesting place. Um, we just saw me that you have been working since six years, so if you could tell me a little bit of background, how you started with the idea, and uh, how you came up with the whole project, please. Well, in 2006, we wanted to first find a solution to teach uh, actually 3D modeling and animation to high school students. So we were developing a program uh, which we wanted to be a, a statewide, at least for our state here in Indiana, in the United States. We wanted to develop a curriculum where students uh, would be exposed to how to make 3D models and animation, which is something they normally don't experience in high school. And we wanted to be able to do that in a environment where in the same environment we could have them learn the modeling techniques um, yes. but then also use that environment to teach them so use the tools of communication within the environment to deliver the uh, the classroom experience too so we looked at a couple different uh, ideas back then we were working closely with a, uh, a product called True Place, which was made by a company called uh, Caligari, and they had a very unique um, software that would let you do this. So you could actually learn more, uh, with not trims, like actually mesh modeling, um, and they allowed you to come in as an avatar and work collectively on the model. So I was very interested in doing that, and we were very close to working with them, and then I discovered Second Life, uh, you know, and I thought even though that you're not working on mesh at the time collaboratively, uh, it was enough similar in terms of the modeling concepts that we could use it. And it was, you know, it's free, it's accessible, uh, it's pretty easy to learn. You know, the basic modeling here. So, uh, so, so we went with that for that program. We, that's that was that was really our first project. Oh, and the experience with the students at first, how it was? Well, actually, you'll find if you. As we talk about the projects, you'll find that what we do is we create the curriculum, we create the experience, but we don't usually deliver it ourselves. Like, for instance, I'll make the course, but I don't teach it. Oh, so, we, <laughs> so it's a yeah, team. It's like a team, and then, so we'll, we'll create it, but then somebody else actually, another faculty member, will actually teach it. So I don't often get to see that side of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I won't be able to answer those kind of questions. No, it's, it's okay. And the impact of the students, do you see any difference after you work in Second Life? Uh, yeah, well, in this case, it was great because, like I said, the students didn't have access to 3D modeling courses in high school. Um, uh -huh. So this allowed them to sign up for a course where they could learn those techniques. So it gave them something that they they uh, didn't have access to, but it also brought people together from across the uh, state, let's say, that was the model that we were developing, but anybody, we were using the teen grid, so at the time, in second life, so the, the students theoretically would sign up through the teen grid, and the courses uh, would happen through there, and, of course, and also it would create a community, a networked community of people from across the whole state. I wanted to ask you about the, the information that flows between the students because you said that people, is, you needed a, a place with 3D where you can use the information from different students, different universities or different states and they can all work together at the same time. So yeah. how did you see this information, how it flows, how this content have an impact on the students if you think it was really enrichment or uh, you think it could be better? What would be your point at this time? Well, like I said, this was providing something that they couldn't have access to otherwise, so it was really the only way to give them content. So that was the, the uh, need, let's say, that the software, in this case Second Life, was fulfilling. So they couldn't get access to it in real life. This oh, was something okay. that only, that, you know, if they wanted to learn 3D modeling, they couldn't do it. So we were providing a way to, for them to do it no matter where they were, and then have a teacher, you know, a faculty member teaching, and then also a, a group of students. So in this case, 
the software was the only way that they could access it. So that's what we wanted to. Uh, that's what I'm always thinking about. You know, is is how this uh, how these technologies can provide what we don't have in, in real life. You know, like we rarely try to do something. If you can do it in real life, we're not that interested in doing it here. You know, it's it's you know what can it provide that we can't do in, in physical reality. You know? Um, well, again, I'm not involved with that side of it, but you know, I think it depends on the, the faculty member. I think often they do do that, uh, where, we're, where we actually do use blogs and social software to do that. I, I would say yes, but again, I'm not teaching the classes. Okay. Do, do you notice that the, t the students have any special kind of technical difficulties during this time? Yes. With, with Second Life, they have problems. With the social software and blogs, they do not. Um, they understand that, but for them, you know, for the students, I think, you know, of course, as you know, uh, most uh, students their age are not in Second Life. The demographic or, or median age of the people in Second Life are a little bit older. So, um, this is for them, most of them, it's the first time they've been in Second Life, and also it's the first time that they're thinking about 3D space on a computer. Most of them have no 3D experience. So yes, I would say it, it, it is difficult at first for them. Could you please show me around this this place and explain me what uh, what is the main project that you have uh, work or what the, the students have done until now, please? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is one of the uh, you just did a cartwheel. This <laughs> this is one of the uh, this is the main campus. So um, really, the buildings that we can look on the sign over here. The buildings that are here are, do you see where I am to your right? Yes, I am where, where you stand. Um, but this map shows the buildings that are here. And so there is a, we come in at the bell tower. And this, like a lot of campuses, this is a reflection of reality to a certain extent. The buildings look pretty much like the buildings in reality. Um, but here we created canals and we can take a gondola and things like that that obviously we don't have in Indiana. Um, but the rest of the buildings are pretty faithful. But this is the public campus. Now, and I can show you around here, but just so you understand, yes. most of our, um, but most of, most of our uh, projects are on other sims. So this, this is really designed um, to have four different areas to it. We have a uh, different... How many, how many sims do you need to manage the whole people? Well, we used to have a lot more. We used to have about 10 sims, but when Linden Labs doubled the pricing on education and nonprofit, we sold off about half of them. So I think now maybe we have six or something like that. Oh. Okay. Five, five or six. Whatever. How many people you can put inside of the sims? 40 usually. I mean, you can maybe put a little more, maybe 50. Okay. So this uh, the sim has a orientation center where you can learn about the university, uh, and all these buildings we see on the side you can just teleport to by clicking on them. But um, so we can talk about it here first. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing. I'm looking around here, and actually they are very realistic. This, yeah, these buildings actually are in, in real life. Pretty close. Okay. Some of the, some of them we virtualized a little bit, like the museum building, which you can kind of see to our right in the distance. We, we here we made it floating. We put glass around it and things like that. So it's a little virtual, but mainly it's the main building is is pretty accurate. Um, so that's an art museum. So so here we have a, we have a library where you can actually check out books right from Second Life uh, and do all sorts of other things. There's um, there's also a what's called the Center for Middletown Studies, which is in the library. Uh, that is based on a, a sociological study in, in America in 1929 and 1937. The, the lid about the university, and get t-shirts and coffee cups and all that kind of thing. Um, and then we have the Music Instruction Building, which uh, has a performance hall, it has studios, uh, things like that, and then also there's a there's a, a, a television studio as well. So you have also um, a channel, TV channel for to to teach to teach all this. Yeah, we used to be much more active in Second Life. Um, to be honest, over the last couple of years, we've we've moved. We still keep a presence here, but we've moved into other software. But uh, but yes, we used to be much more active and, and, and do a lot of projects.